Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I have uh, introduced you to the Gazebo Simulator and today I'm going to show you the graphical user interface. Uh, I mean, most of our work in the future will be using coding. You can pretty much do everything with coding, with coding but the graphical user interface or the GUI is sometimes very essential and useful. So I advise you to watch this video till the end and as usual do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos and to hit the notification button to stay updated so let's start all right so uh, i have a prepared like some notes let me open them all right uh, let me launch gazebo now i will type gazebo and i showed you in the previous video it is advisable to start it paused using the u parameter okay so sometimes gazebo won't run so in this case you need to kill all the GZ server because 90% of the cases the reason will be that the gazebo server will be already uh, run in the background so you need to kill it before starting it so here we go gazebo you okay it worked all right so here's the thing I will talk about pretty much any button I will see in front of me uh, and I will try to cover everything in the uh, next couple of videos so let's see first of course you will have the scene this is it right here here all your models will be placed this is the ground uh, the grid will be on it and this is your uh, atmosphere let's say and here you will have a uh, panel on the left hand side and another panel on the right hand side it is not shown by default but you can press on the three points right here using your mouse you click and you drag okay okay so here it is now let me begin by talking about this panel right here let me ex expand it a bit okay so here you will have the three tabs mainly you will have the word tab and inside of it you will have many uh, options uh, you can select any one of them to change uh, their properties now the word is uh, everything right here the environment and all the models inside of it okay so let me press on the GUI here you can change the position of the camera uh, for example let me change its position along the x-axis to 10 10 okay so as you can see it changed these are my axis the x and the y is the green line and the z axis right here the blue one and you can change the rotation of the camera you can change actually the properties of the grid the cell size and the number uh, let me see yeah you can change the cell count and etc and this is the grid right here as you can see and you can change some things related to color etc let me click on the scene and the scene actually will allow you to change the properties of the ambient the background and the shadow you can choose to display the shadow or not and this will change like pretty much everything related to your scene not your model itself feel free to play with them these are the spherical coordinates these are the physics now for the physics engine i've talked about that in the previous video if you remember and i told you that uh, in gazebo you can use a multitude of engines of physics engines but here i'm using the open dynamics engine and it will be like it will be ode by default uh, but you can change it i believe um, uh, but i'm not gonna change it right now uh, don't worry about it we are going to use this engine you can change some physical properties like the gravity per se or any other things now 
you will have the atmosphere you can change some properties like the temperature i believe this is in kelvin uh, the pressure uh, etc the wind uh, here the wind uh, is not present the linear velocity is zero and here you will have your models that are present inside your word you can change their properties too uh, and later on, I will show you how to change the properties of a model in a much more flexible manner. Uh, here you will have by default the ground plane and there's nothing on it. But if I place a certain model inside my environment, it will appear right here and you can click on it and change its properties. And each model is composed of parts and these parts are called links uh, inside Gazebo. Now here you will have the lights. Now I will talk about this tab in a bit. Uh, this bar sorry in a bit but just like to play around a bit with it here you have the option to place a light just like the sunlight and once you place it it will appear here under the lights this is it you can delete it by selecting it and pressing delete now this is pretty much everything in the word let me go to the insert tab in the insert tab you have the ability to insert models inside your scene as expected um uh, uh, here you will have multiple paths, okay? So this path right here, the user share Gazebo 9, it will be created by default. Uh, and actually it was created once you have installed the Gazebo 9 simulator package that uh, just like I did in the previous video. Uh, now here also you will have the models database. And what is that? This is a list of models created by other developers uh, and these models are ready to be used by you inside the scene. You can just like click on them. Let me choose, I don't know, arm part. You just click on it and then you hover uh, over the scene and you click again to place it. I can delete it too. And uh, actually, uh, these uh, these models are available online using the following link. You can uh, uh, actually uh, uh, you can uh, copy this link and paste it into a browser page to check uh, this page. Uh, this page actually actually is a GitHub repository uh, where the code exists, all the code of these models. So uh, I believe I have copied the link in my notes. So, okay, this is it. So let me go there. So uh, for those of you who don't know how to use GitHub, uh, I mean, you can choose the, you can uh, tap on the button here and click on the button right here and choose the download zip option. And this will allow you to download a zip folder with all the code for these example models inside of it. And you can then uh, use them in Gazebo Simulator in case you faced a certain problem. Uh, in case, let's say this path uh, d didn't show up, it says, uh, uh, in case it said it's connecting or something and you faced some problem with the connection, uh, you can download them on your own and you can extract them and use these models in your uh, environment. Uh, and actually, uh, GitHub is a very important tool in case you are coding uh, with a team, you want to share your work, uh, you want like to work, uh, uh, to work, let's say, with your friends on a code, on a single code, it's very important. And I'm thinking about releasing a video series about GitHub in the future. Uh, but for those of you who don't know how to use it, I mean, this is not the conventional way to, uh, let's say, download a certain code from GitHub, but just for the beginners, you can use the download zip uh, option for now. Now, of course, after downloading uh, the zip file and extracting it, you should add the directory. Uh, uh, where you have downloaded it into the path of gazebo so that this path can be available right here and you can choose the models from it. You just click on add path and you add the directory where you have your models. And actually I have, uh, I think added a custom path. I think this is it and where I have included some models. 
Okay, so uh, finally you have the layers tab and just like any other software with uh, a visualization component, uh, let's take for example, uh, AutoCAD or SolidWorks, uh, they give you the ability to group uh, many parts of a complicated model into layers. You can think of layers as groups containing many parts and this can be used for visibility purposes. So you can use these layers to show and uh, hide the parts contained in them simultaneously uh, if you want to see them or to hide them, I don't know. Now, uh, of course, this can be done in Gazebo using the code, using coding. Uh, but uh, I will not do it right now. Right now, I will show you how to use them uh, from the GUI manner. Let's assume that you have a code uh, where the parts of a certain model are placed in layers. Let's call them layer one, layer two, or layer zero, and we will control their visibility. So I have this word file right here. Now, what is a word file? This is actually, as the name implies, as the extension of the file implies, this is a file where a simulation word, a gazebo simulation word is saved with all the models inside of it, all the properties inside of it. Okay, so I will just load it and it was already, it has been already written by someone else. Let me actually close this window before starting a new one. This is essential. Now let me paste it and this will start gazebo, but this time it will not be empty. It will start it with a saved word. And this word you in this word you will have three shapes. And using coding, apparently these shapes have been placed in three layers called layer zero, layer one, layer two. Uh, this is why they appeared right here, but previously they didn't, um, these options. Uh, you can check and uncheck the boxes to control the visibility of the parts inside each layer. So this is how it works, basically. Let me reopen the original gazebo session, the empty one. All right. Um, uh, that's it for the left hand panel. Let me go ahead and expand the right hand panel. Okay. What's happening? All right. Sometimes I face uh, problems like dragging it, but not a big deal. Anyway, so let me go to insert. Let me, let's say insert, I don't know, a model that I have created and this model actually will be used later on when we work on the autonomous vehicle. This will be our model. I will show you like in details uh, how to create this model and how to define it uh, It's in Gazebo. Now you should click on it and after clicking on the model, you should see these options appearing here in this panel. Now here you can specify, let's say the forces or the torques. Uh, on the joints that you have inside your model. It depends if you have a revolutionary joint, of course, this will be a torque. If you have a prismatic or translational joint, it will be a linear force. Here you will have the uh, position, the velocity, and you can specify the desired values for those. And actually, if you notice, you will have the PID controller gains. For those of you who are not familiar with the control theory, specifically the linear control theory, the PID controller is a specific type of controllers that will allow you to reach a specific value. Uh, let's say uh, a position for a wheel, let's say. Uh, of course, using uh, certain criteria, uh, certain speed uh, and certain some overshoot or not. I don't want to do to go over it right now. This is out of the scope of this tutorial, but let me show you a uh, an example of that. So let me specify this angle for this wheel and let me run the simulation using the play button right here. Now, as you can see, the uh, car will try to move in order to reach this position. And actually it will not reach it very efficiently and maybe it will diverge. Uh, because I didn't tune the PID controller gains, but this is not a big deal for now. I just wanted to show you the idea. Now, that's it for here. Um, uh, 
let me talk a bit about the bottom uh, bar right here here you will have uh, some properties related to the simulation itself and you cannot change any of these numbers right here these are automatically generated during the simulation you can only change the step number now let me begin from here you will have the play button to play and pause your simulation uh, if your simulation is paused you can specify the number of steps that you wish to uh, go through uh, in case your simulation is stopped just to see what will happen let's say after a certain number of steps let's say what will happen let's see what will happen after 50 steps of this simulation as it is defined you will see that the car will move a bit and if you increase the number of steps it will move further of course by selecting this button right here now uh, you will have also the simulation time and the real time the real time as the name implies it's the time in the real life and uh, the simulation will be slower or uh, let's say quicker than the uh, real time than the real life uh, depending on the calculation needed to run the simulation and I believe it depends on the computational power of your system on which you are running the simulation here you will have the number of iterations and here you will have the frames per second for the rendering of the graphics you can reset the time of course to zero using this button now uh, I think that's enough for this video um, in the next video I will talk further about the GUI uh, and uh, I hope uh, you guys stay tuned and watch all the videos related to the GUI because it's very important uh, I hope you like this video for now and I uh, bid you farewell.